My name is Leslie and I live in Seattle, Washington. I went to school at Washington State University in 1972 and like many people who spent any number of years there, I have made the drive from Western Washington to Pullman at least 100 times. One May weekend several years ago, I was driving to Pullman to drop off a book donation to WSU for my mother. It was springtime and the weather was warm. I think I was either unemployed or underemployed, but for the first time ever, I had the advantage of no pressing schedule and no particular task other than to drive. When I stopped for a chocolate milkshake in Washtuckna for the hundredth time, I was appalled to realize that this was the first time in all these trips that I actually thought about taking back roads for the fun of it. I kept driving. This is the sign that did it. Hey, 10. What did it actually mean? Was there a town there or just, hey? How many people drove past this sign and wondered the same thing? I decided it was time to go look at all these things for myself and find out what we've all been missing. Since someone needed to run the camera on the subsequent trips, I invited my friend Jean along to help uncover the mysteries of the road to Pullman. But first, a little preparation. Jean lives in Seattle. She's getting ready for her first trip to Pullman with an act of rebellion that just might get her shot at in a less enlightened town. Are you prepared for your trip with all necessary safety equipment? Yes, I am. I have my commuter cup. I have my Smarties. I have my steely dan tapes. And maps? I guess maps aren't really necessary. To get to Pullman, it's easy. You take Interstate 90 East to Vantage. You turn right, take Highway 26 to Colfax, and turn left. You can't miss it. Packing the car properly will ensure comfort and safety for everyone. Now that we're all packed and ready to go, it's time to hit the road. pass through some pretty unsavory places to get to the desirable ones. This is our first side trip on our journey to Pullman. Issaquah is more than strip malls and new tract housing areas with quaint woodsy names painted on their cinder block portals. 20 years ago, it was a small farming town. Just the past week, they wiped out the rest of the berry bushes and the trees and everything. Now this I find metaphorical. Metaphor, by the way, is something I learned in college. It looks like a dairy cow, but it's really a painting of a dairy cow, just like Issaquah is just a shadow of a small farming town. The ceaseless car traffic betrays the truth. This sign tells us that the depot can be rented for special occasions. If enough people rent it, maybe we can just bring back passenger trains. I think it's worth a try. Even though the suburban scene grows tiresome, there are a few advantages here. One of Issaquah's remaining landmarks is this triple X root beer stand, which is the last one of its kind still operating. At night, this icon to all that is good stands as a beacon for those who recall fondly the days of a good root beer and a good Coney dog. Bohm's Candies are well known in western Washington and their shop can be visited by screaming off the freeway, stampeding down anyone in your way, and loading up for the long trip. It is, after all, chocolate. Back when this film was made, the interstate went through the town of North Bend. There was a design covenant that still exists today, which required every business on the main street to face the buildings with a Swiss chalet look. My particular favorite is this Chinese restaurant. The commercial focus of North Bend has shifted from Main Street merchants and restaurants to the massive and soulless meccas for the thrifty, the factory outlet mall. This particular one has a foreign flair. The song. Well, maybe not. Well, it's Sunday noon in North Bend, and I'm really hungry. 
It looks like a good place to go eat. Let's go. The Factory Outlet Mall is absolutely not the place for food or a restroom if you can help it. Nearby are some gas stations and fast food places and a family restaurant. One thing to remember about family restaurants is that babies eat there and they're messy little eaters. Even if you're really hungry and it's raining and you can't stand it another minute, remember that you're only about uh, 60 miles from some good grub in Clee Elm and Roslyn. If you're wondering what this landmark is just outside of the town of North Bend, it's Mount Sai. Snoqualmie Falls is a good example of another short side trip on your drive to Pullman. It's only four miles off Interstate 90 and is spectacular to see. If you've made the mistake of eating earlier at a family restaurant, most which pale by comparison, you can also use the logistics of the observation deck to reflect on your oversight. It's always a good idea to be prepared for any weather by making sure your tire chains fit and that you know how to put them on your car. It is infinitely easier to learn to do this in July. With practice and preparation, dealing with snow will be stress-free, easy, and even enjoyable. Good as new. Well, easy for me because I'm not the one doing it. And if you don't have chains, you can put all that road food to good use. Ketchulis Lake is also known as Stump Lake for obvious reasons. Ketchulis means few fish, and a few miles down the road is the larger Kachis Lake, which means many fish. The John Wayne Trail is part of a recreational rail trail and makes use of the old Burlington Northern right-of-way. The old right-of-way actually begins in Carnation back near Issaquah and various trails connect to go all the way across the state through very exposed and remote high desert where water is difficult to come by. When you get to Vantage, you'll see what I mean. Nonetheless, many riders and horses are itching to get out there. This is Roslyn, Washington. It is well known as the location for the popular television series Northern Exposure. Even though the show got canceled several years ago, you can still get souvenirs and see the old K-Bearer set. Roslyn got its start as a mining town supplying coal to western Washington. You may remember seeing the brick on Northern Exposure. The magnificent old building is on the historic registry and the food is excellent. Roslyn Cemetery is worth a trip to this town all by itself. 22 different plots make up the cemetery sponsored by the various families, lodges and associations in the area. Recently, the Black Miners Lodge Cemetery was improved with a new fence and new crosses. 
curiosity drove us to find the Druid Cemetery, but all we found were trees. The only way we knew that there was one at all was from the map. Perhaps this is what they intended. As I mentioned back at North Bend, Clee Ellum is a good food stop. Let's see, chocolate, smoked meats, and a bakery. It's all the snackage we need. Sometimes I drive alone with my video camera. This can be disorienting and renders less than satisfactory results. It is at best unproductive and at worst, well, fatal. Careening all over the road in the name of art can be tiring. This is the first of two rest stops on the road to Pullman. A good road tripper knows how to get the most out of a rest stop. Terrific bargains on produce can be found on the road to Pullman, but not here. The best bargains can be found about 200 miles away, and I know it seems like I keep telling you to wait an hour here and four hours there, but trust me on this. In this building, incognito, this completely undistinguished building, lies some of the best ice cream you, you will ever taste. Really? Yes. By the time you get to Ellensburg, you're about a third the way through your trip to Pullman, and it's only natural to be thinking about refueling at this point, and maybe getting out of the car like you mean it. Do you want to experience the vast collection of the best franchise restaurants America has to offer? Or maybe you'd like to drive into town and check out a bit of Washington history for yourself. Kittitas County is the leader in the state for beef production. Ellensburg is also home to the big Labor Day Rodeo. However, driving into town, you'll see that there is an espresso bar trade that per capita makes the coffee culture in Seattle look like a bunch of wusses sitting around drinking Bosco. Ellensburg is the home of Central Washington University. Here we are across the street from the School of Creative Spelling. Ellensburg was once in the running for state capital along with Yakima and Olympia until a fire burned down much of the downtown in 1889. The town of Ellensburg rose from the ashes like a phoenix and rebuilt. Much of the downtown area is a historic district. bad is bad topiary. So far we've explored road food, but before we go any further, let's celebrate the ultimate road snack. We eat lots of them. We buy them by the five pound sack. We love Smarties. Smarty. Smarty, quintessential road food. This is the town of Kittitas, a few miles east of Ellensburg. As small farming towns go, it beats the snot out of Issaquah. This is probably the only place where there is any real danger navigating. At Vantage, State Highway 26 splits off to run parallel to Interstate 90. No, no, you don't stay on this road. You, you actually, there's actually a turnoff. But I don't see a sign, but there's a turnoff. There really is. Okay, so I think, I think this is, I think this is, I think this is, the, I think this is, 
No, that was the one. That was, that was it. That was the that that was the. Yeah, it goes to Richland. No, that was well. It also goes to Pullman. You see, now this goes on for really quite a ways. And oh crap! Well, let's see if you pull over. I'll show you the map. Okay. I don't believe you. It's always a good idea to make the best of a mistake, and this is a good place to get some altitude for a great view of the Columbia River. Grandfather Cuts Loose the Ponies is a monumental sculpture that shows the first horses spilling out of a giant basket. By the late 1700s, the Shoshone had introduced the horse to the Columbia Plateau tribes, and the Cayuse and Palouse tribes had turned horse breeding into an art. The Palouse people are now gone, but the Cayuse pony and the Appaloosa horse remain. This is the way we should have come. And My car wanted to go this way. Ah, I see. Uh, okay, now, go. this is, you wouldn't see this unless you, of course, made the same mistake we did. But these signs say Othello, which is where we're going, Richland. We are. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Almost did it again. No, wait, I think we're going back across the damn bridge. Oh, God. You sure? Yep. Okay. That's what we almost did by it's taking like, the I, other I'm surprised there's not a bigger community here. Okay, see, that says 26. That's what we want, 26. We want 26, okay. Got the combine buggy <laughs> up and down the road.
Coolies like this one are a geographical feature unique to eastern Washington. They were formed 10,000 years ago when the massive Missoula flood inundated this area on its way to the Pacific Ocean. You can see the path the water took. Don't lie to me. of Colotus. The place name means hole in the ground and that alone makes it worth a 13 mile diversion. Washtokna is a mandatory stop for many drivers. Personally, I have been stopping here at McKenzie's for 25 years for a chocolate mall. Unleaded and diesel. That pretty much covers required automotive fuel. This is their way of saying you should have filled up in Royal City. By now you are well into Whitman County. Whitman County has the largest percentage of farmed land in Washington State as well as having the lowest rate of unemployment. La Crosse is one of those towns I never took the time to visit in 20 years. In 1960, Highway 26 went right down Main Street. Last year, they just celebrated their 100th anniversary of being a quiet little farming town. And here we are at the sign that got me started in the first place. Hey. Hey, Washington. During the blizzard of 1892, the railroad siding at this location was identified as Hay Station. This is where they brought the hay for the cattle. When they located a post office here, they called the place Hay. Now, no post office, no gas station, no general store, no park, no railroad siding. Well, there you have it. Now we can move on and have a happy hay. We are now officially in the Palouse country. The name Palouse is from a French word that means ground covered with thick short grass. Perhaps this was true 100 years ago, but the Palouse of today is about 99% introduced plant species, not much of it short.
This is Dusty. Dusty was named for obvious reasons. The land is dusty, the grain silos are dusty, the prominent businesses here are dust related. Need water to wash down all the road dust? No water here, it is after all, dusty. One good way to cut a few miles off your trip to Pullman is to take a shortcut before Colfax. You won't save any driving time, but the scenery along Union Flat Creek makes it a road worth taking. Here it is essential to have a very detailed map. This falls into the category of stupid ways to die. While I was trying to get this on videotape, I was also picturing my embarrassed family at my funeral. My mother would say, she died an artist. My father would say, she got run over by a cow. If you don't trust rural shortcuts, I mean, you saw what happened in Vantage and that was an interstate. You could do what most people do and play it safe and go through Colfax, which is the Whitman County seat and home to such splendors as the Concrete River and the Codger Pole, which I refuse to get into. And here we are at the end of the road to Pullman. Just like the beginning of our trip, there's coffee here. The town of Pullman was previously known as Paradise for whatever reason, and later as Three Forks because it was at the junction of Paradise Creek, South Fork, Palouse River, and Missouri Flat Creek. We arrive at Washington State University Center for Higher Learning. Some things are timeless, like whenever you turn on a camera, you're bound to catch somebody with a finger up their nose. Wherever there's a road, there's a road trip. Missoula, that's not in Idaho, is it? I think we're gonna need a map.
taking notes? I didn't think so. Here's a recap of The Road to Pullman.